I haven't done one of these in a while, but uh, you know, you ever played retro games, cartridge-based games, and then you can't save your games anymore? Well, that's because uh, the games like this have battery-backed memory. There's actually a small battery inside the cartridges. <laughs> that's why that's what saves your game. When it dies, you can't use it anymore. Uh, N64 games mostly have done away with this, but Zelda 64 is one that does. So, I'm going to teach you how to replace these batteries. So, what you'll need, first of all, is a game. I think that would be helpful. NES, SNES, or N64 game. Second thing you will need is a soldering iron. Now, um, this is my soldering iron, and this is the first time I've used this one. It's a 30 watt, and uh, I wouldn't recommend going much higher than that. There are various, you know, different, uh, different wattages for soldering irons. You go much higher than that, it'll get so hot it'll melt stuff, which is, you know, melt the stuff in your game, which is not good. Now, I'd like to talk about this for a bit, because most of the videos I watched for research kind of assumed you were already familiar with soldering, and... Maybe I'm just a dummy, but I admit I had to look this up myself when I was teaching myself how to do this. And I feel a lot of people are coming into this just to play their old video games again and might not know anything about soldering. So I think it's important you start before you start soldering to actually know something about it. So this is a soldering iron, and it's used to, well, solder. And it is spelled S-O-L-D-E-R, but it's pronounced solder, at least here in the States. You think it'd be pronounced solder, you can go figure. But it's kind of the poor man's welding. It's a practice of adjoining two things with a melted piece of metal that has a low melting point, lower than what it is you're trying to put together again. And it's often used in electronics to attach things to circuit boards like we're doing here. And it's really nothing more than a stick you plug in and it gets really, really hot. Like seriously, really hot. Only hold it by its handle when you're using it. Uh, don't touch the metal part. And make sure it's on a stand when you're not using it. Now, what you also need, you have a soldering iron, you also have to have solder, rosin solder in this case, which is just a really soft piece of metal. Came with my soldering kit, see it's so soft you can just do that to it. Uh, so when this heats up, you touch the soldering iron to it and it melts this, but it doesn't melt what you're trying to attach. So once you're finished and it hardens up again, you form the connection between the two pieces. So you have a soldering iron and you also have solder. Next thing you're going to need will be uh, this 3.8 millimeter security screwdriver because I'm sure if you've noticed most cartridge based games they have different types of screws you can't get at this with a standard or you know Phillips head you have to have a certain special type of screwdriver I got this off uh, Amazon for about six dollars I got the soldering set for about fifteen dollars the next you will also need a replacement battery a CR2032 battery like this basically a type of watch battery or button cell whatever you want to call it now, a lot of the videos I watch showing how to do this have the batteries in a plastic casing with the terminal points on it. They seem to be really bulky and make it hard to close the cartridge back up. Although you do want a battery that has tabs on it. If you get a battery without tabs, you don't have any positive or negative terminals to attach the circuit board. So, it has positive and negative tabs and also just this insulating bit right here, but it doesn't really change the thickness of the battery very much. So I did buy this set of five batteries in case I need to replace batteries on more games in the future. Also, if you're doing N64 games, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, and, and you'll see why in a minute, a pretty simple one. A, a, a kind of small one, too. No big deal. NES, SNES, you don't really need one of these, just for N64. So first, you use your security screwdriver to uh, take out these screws on the back right here. And because I'm very obsessive compulsive, I have to make sure they stay in the same order. Otherwise, I might go a little bit insane. So, unscrew, 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 unscrew. Take this out. And now we can open this up. Alright, so on top here you have this metal piece, kind of probably a heat sink or something. Uh, NES, SNES games don't have this, just the N64 games, and that's what we're going to need the Phillips head screwdriver for, is to take this off, because there are two screws, one on each side. So, just unscrew these. Again, pretty simple stuff. And once again, I'm going to be completely crazy and make sure that I keep the same screw on the same side. Aren't you glad you know me? Alright, so both of those are off, and now you just sort of pull this off. Be careful, but it's, you know fairly simple and this is our circuit board this is the component side of a circuit board It has all the chips and the battery on it you can see right there in the top left corner so let me just go ahead and plug in my soldering iron to make sure it's ready when we need it 
takes some time to heat up. Okay, N64 cartridges are also different from NES and SNES because they have this little black thing right here. Um, the NES and SNES's cartridges are built in such a way that it covers this up automatically, but the N64 games are open this way, so you actually have this little black piece of plastic that also has to come off from the circuit board. See, it's open right there. So, carefully lift the circuit board out. And then we're going to take this off. Just slides right off. Pretty simple. And we also have another one of these on the back side. But you don't really need to bother with it because you don't need to get to that side. That's just the cartridge casing. Alright, so one, like I said, this is the component side. So this is the entire land of Hyrule laid out. This is how it's how it all happens. And you have your battery and your chips and everything else. And as you can see, the battery has a date on it. All the ones I've opened up seem to have dates. And this game came out, I got it in November of 98 when it first came out, so this battery looks like it says September of 98. Uh, looks like, I mean, they all seem to have the, the month after the year, so... So, yeah, that's... Uh, that would seem to make sense. So, yeah, now we're going to have to remove this battery and replace it with the other one. This is the soldering side of a board, and you can see it has two solder points for both the positive on top and the negative terminal on the bottom. And you see little tabs go through on the back right there. And you can see the tons of other soldering points too for everything else in the game. What you're going to do is take your soldering iron and apply heat until it melts away the solder that's already on there. And then we can pull the old battery out. Now something to keep in mind is that, uh, see, this, this old battery has the positive, uh, positive side labeled. The battery I have doesn't have them labeled in such a way, which is kind of annoying, because you don't want to put the battery on the wrong side. But you can tell the difference. The front side in this battery is the positive side, and the back is the negative. Now, you couldn't put it in wrong, you know, upside down, because, you know, it wouldn't fit. You couldn't put it in backwards, because it wouldn't fit. But, you know, you could put them in the wrong way the other way. So now our soldering iron is heated up, and we just have to apply it to the solder on there and try to get this out be careful not to you know make it you know, force it out or anything because you don't want to damage the motherboard but just wait till it gets hot enough and then the solder will start to melt and then see it's starting to come out already just keep on applying the heat there and I think that's starting to come out so you got to do this, the top positive terminal, and obviously when you're done with that, you have to move on to the negative on the bottom. And just be careful not to touch the so other solder points. And once you've... yeah, there we go. Now it's popped off. Probably wasn't as smooth or elegant as would be best, but anyway, yeah, this is the old battery. I might do... And it might put it in the, the box. But yes, make sure you have the, uh, the battery terminals facing the same way. The front top facing one goes out there. You also see on this that the, uh, the tabs themselves are a little bit different. On the original battery, the positive tab is a lot bigger than the negative tab. But on this new battery, they're both the same size and both really tiny. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work just to make sure that they line up properly. See, these, these are both... Tiny. I mean, the good news is, since they're not both big, that means they're both going to actually fit. I've seen other people's batteries, they actually have to cut off part of the negative tab just to make sure it goes through. So, I'd say this is better than the alternative. But, it's not going to be a perfect match. So, as you can see, the, the positive, positive hole is a lot bigger than the tab is going to be, so it's got a lot of room to get in there. And the tabs, because of this little you know, rubber insulating thing doesn't quite match up, so you got to bend the tabs in a little bit to make sure they fit through, um, and then, you know, bend it a little bit to make sure that, the, especially the positive one, is secure on the back right here. So you got to get those through all the way, and it takes a little bit of finagling. So now we have, we've done our desoldering, now it's time to resolder it. Now, you know, there are tools, professional tools, to remove solder when you're desoldering, and I you know, recommend that in general. I'm not work. I don't have those myself, but you know, they're they're like solder suckers and like certain types of wax paper that remove, uh, remove solder. So our soldering iron is heated up. 
as you can see it's sort of uh, gotten some use now it's not brand new anymore it's a bit darker but yeah you don't have to cut the solder or anything you just melt it off with the soldering iron it does produce a little bit of smoke be careful not to breathe it in it's not that good for you but yeah see once it melts off then it's you know it's separated from your uh, your coil so you got to do both sides and what you want to do is just you know close it up to these uh, these points just like it looked originally so I'm just trying to make that look kind of nice and yeah there now it's tabs are through and they are connected but yeah see now the uh, the gaps are filled again and it looks fairly similar to how it did before and now that we've gotten that let's just uh, close it back up again so there is our our new battery it's a tiny bit bigger than the old one just because that insulating bit but don't forget to put your little black plastic thing back on and this this is actually the hardest part of getting it back on it's kind of difficult to get it to fit back into place with the plastic piece but you can't put it on afterwards so just gotta finagle with it until it there we go Whew. That wasn't as bad as it's been in the past for me. So yeah, put your cover back on, and this is the moment of truth. Will it fit? Yes! Yes! That fit perfectly. I was afraid it might have been a little bit too big. I had to sort of force it in there, but that was perfect. So, screw your screws back in. Pretty simple stuff. Da -da 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 -da. So use a security screwdriver to uh, put these back in. And there we go, it's back together again, and just looking at it, you would not be able to tell that anything is different, but it does have a new battery in it. And uh, the old one, I can, I don't, I don't want to get rid of it, it's such a piece of the history, I might just, I still have the, the box it came in, uh, in, the game came in, so I might just put it in that. <laughs> so, let's just pop this in and see if it works. So now we're going handheld. This is the same Zelda 64 cartridge, you can see it has some... Same scuffing up there at the top right corner of the label where the title is. This is my Nintendo 64, just gonna pop it on in there, turn it on, and good. Looks like none of the soldering I did uh, messed up the board in any way, so that's a good start to this. So start it up. You can see there are no save files, and also that I am indeed controlling this. So I've been playing for a little while. Same Zelda 64 cartridge, same Nintendo 64. I have nine rupees, the Kokiri Sword, Deku Shield, and three heart containers, all of which are full right now. I think that's enough to test this out and see if it works. So let's go ahead and save the game. Save it. And now we are going to turn it off. And hopefully when we turn it back on, it'll still be there. Let's turn it back on. And there it is again. Press start to play. And our save file is still there, so the battery did save it, so that's successful. I do have a confession to make with this copy of the game, though. The battery actually was not the problem with this, it's just a useful guinea pig, because as a kid I did a lot of crooked cartridge stuff with this game, which involves pulling it out of the console while it's still on, it get glitches to happen, and now it does um, stuff like this. So the battery's not the real problem, but it was useful to see, you know, show you on this video if this works. And as you can see, we still have 9 Rupees, 3 Hearts, Kokiri Sword, Deku Shield. So the battery is holding a charge and it's holding a save. And that, that's it. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And hope you found it entertaining and interesting. And as long as you aren't doing Crooked Cartridge stuff to your game, then uh, this should you know, cause you to be able to play Zelda 64 for many more years to come. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye.